Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll discuss the memoryless property of a system, and we'll take help of these seven examples to clarify our concept. First of all, the definition: the output at any given time is dependent on the input at that same time only. So this is very important that we have to keep in mind. And the technique that we'll follow is that we put any value of t, generally we put t is equal to zero in xt, and if the output yt also remains at that same time, then the system is memoryless. So let's see the first example. And same concept you have to keep in mind that time uh, has to be same. Putting t is equal to 0 in this, we get y0, put t is equal to 0 here, t is equal to 0 here, and now we get this result. Now this is y0 is present, and this is y minus 2 is past and y plus 2 is future. And to understand this, we'll go to the time reference diagram. This is where we are now at t is equal to 0. And anything toward the left hand side is the past. And anything towards the right hand side of this point is future. So x minus 2 is we are here. So this is past. And x plus 2 is we are here. So this is future. And so this does not uh, validate this, that the output at any given time is dependent on the input at that same time. Here the output at zero time is depending on input at minus two, or the past input, or also in the future input. Therefore, we can conclude that the system has memory, and it is not memoryless. We'll follow the same technique in all the other examples. Same definition, put t is equal to zero. Now cost zero is as a constant one. And then when x is zero, then y is zero. And therefore, uh, we are at the same time. And so this is our present time, and this is also present time. Therefore, this system is memoryless. The memoryless system. The next example is uh, we are integrating. Uh, let's see. Put t is equal to zero. T is equal to zero. And uh, apparently, you can see from here very clearly that the limit is from minus infinity to zero. That means it is depending on the past and the present. And therefore, the system has memory. This is present. This is past and present because starting from minus infinity up to this point, minus infinity up to this point. So the system has memory. Next question. Now, since the output is 0 for t less than 0, we'll only consider the second part. Put t is equal to 0. And from here, you can see that we have gone into the past. This is present, present, and past. From this diagram, you can see minus 2 is past. And therefore, this system has memory. Also, this is the same question, except that the limit uh, is different. But it does not really affect uh, this calculation. So we'll follow the same. We'll neglect this for the time being, because it is a 0 already. And putting t is equal to 0, we get the result present, present, and past. This also has memory. And then this question, and I told you that wherever 
that is uh, of the form uh, which is not usual then you have to be really careful to find out the properties so first of all we put t is equal to zero present present okay but we must try at least one or two values actually in exam you should try always try three values minus one zero minus one and one okay now if you put t is equal to minus three you could have put in t is equal to minus one but for just ease of calculation, I'm putting t is equal to minus 3. So this one will become uh, minus 1. Now look at the status here with the help of time diagram. Present, we are at, at this point, minus 3. So output is at minus 3, but input is at minus 1. So it is on the right hand side from this point. Now this is our reference point. So on the right is future and left is past. So we are on the right in case of an X and therefore it is future and therefore this system has memory. So this answer, uh, we should not conclude from this answer. And finally, Here also we put x is equal to uh, t is equal to 0. So this is uh, present and present both. But we, from here we conclude that this system is memoryless. But the answer in the book says it is not memoryless. And one justification given by uh, Mr. Jalil is that if we take the definition of the differentiation and if we instead of our x now we substitute t put t is equal to zero then we have this term uh, dt or dx uh, left which which takes it to the future so that may be one definition but this is not very convincing definition uh, for concluding that this is memoryless. But anyway, the answer could be both depending on you, how you justify it. I hope uh, you have been able to follow this. And in the end, I will like to thank these two gentlemen, Itam Jalid, very good uh, presentation. And also Raji, Raji Patel, he also has made a very good effort. Thank you.